Some breaking transfer news from Man City. We've signed a brand new centre back in Manuel Akanji from Bruce of Dortmund. Uh, this is a really interesting deal for a number of reasons. We'll talk through the deal and where he fits in uh, throughout this video. Uh, but firstly, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tons of Man City content coming out. And obviously, uh, check out my reaction to the 6 0 win last night. Really, really special game last night. And City looked very, very strong. And we're only adding to it. To, uh, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. We'd really appreciate it. Um, let's start off with where Manuel Akanji fits in. Firstly, his age profile is very interesting and the length of deal that he signed. He signed a five year deal. He's 27 years old. So this guy's coming in to have an impact this season, to have an impact in the mid to long term at Man City. Um, and that is interesting because obviously, look, if we sign him on a five-year deal, maybe a bit like uh, Sergio Gomez has come in or, or Ortega, you know, maybe prospects for the future a little bit. But this guy's coming in uh, with his age category until, you know, potentially if he sees out his contract to his early 30s. So this is the kind of guy that Guardiola clearly trusts right now to, to do a job. You know, he's clearly someone that he could, he could have started against Forrest, clearly. That's what Guardiola sees in him because Guardiola doesn't go out and sign anyone in that age category, especially later on in the transfer window. And that's why it's quite an interesting one. Um, £15 million for someone who's you know Champions League centre-back and international with over, over 40 caps for Switzerland. He's played over 150 times for Borussia Dortmund. That's no mean feat. One of the biggest clubs in Europe. Um, Obviously, we have to be completely real estate. He's joining City as he was probably third choice uh, at Dortmund after the couple of centre-backs they recently signed, including Sula from Bayern Munich. Um, so this guy isn't coming in as kind of, maybe you look at Koundé uh, leaving Sevilla and linked to Chelsea, Man City, that kind of really exciting top-tier prospect. We have to be completely real and say Kanji's a little bit below that, a little bit more of a modest signing with all due respect. I'm sure he can improve under Guardiola. I'm sure he'll get to a much higher level than he's currently at. But this is less of a kind of prospect signing, less of a kind of big, big name. This is more of a... Uh, 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 someone to fill in a gap, potentially someone to balance the squad. And it is very interesting in terms of the repercussions of a few players, especially players that are currently injured for Man City. Um, let's start off with, with those injuries, because obviously currently Laporte is injured, potentially till the end of September. Uh, Nathan Ake uh, came off against Newcastle as well. And I think there's two big things that City are looking at from the higher-ups uh, about our squad, especially in defence. Um, the first one is the Champions League campaign. Now, obviously, you, you can't blame us losing to Real Madrid um, on Carl Walker getting injured, of course not. And Ruben Diaz missed a large part of that as well. But I think they're looking at it thinking in terms of rotation, especially with a World Cup year, if we can go and sign someone for 50 million quid that can fill a gap, that can play against the likes of a Nottingham Forest and rotate, you know, that means Laporte and, and people like that, when they are fit, they're not playing week in, week out, especially again with that World Cup happening. I think the higher-ups at City are, are wanting to give Guardiola a bit more ammunition in terms of squad depth for this season in particular and then moving forward because of those injuries that we're seeing already at the start of the season. He can come in, he's fully fit, he could start on the weekend. Um, hopefully that won't happen because of Diaz and Stones looking really, really good. But I think that Champions League campaign where Carl Walker, Ruben Diaz had a, had a couple of knocks, I think that scarred the City higher-ups because we're looking at Haaland starting so well, our midfield so strong, the way we play is so beautiful, but then we don't want to leave Guardiola short. I think it's also an, uh, an interesting commentary on maybe Laporte's future, Nathan Ake's future. Obviously, Nathan Ake nearly left this summer. Uh, if one of those two were to leave because of a lack of game time, uh, because I, I do see John Stones and Diaz maybe cementing a partnership this season. Akanji's one of those players that may be a little bit more happy to be on the bench. Uh, he certainly was um, at points for Dortmund. Um, so you do look at it and think maybe, you know, if Laporte was to go to Barcelona, he's been linked, or, or maybe even like a PSG, something like that. Then Akanji suddenly... You know, I know he's the fifth sense back at City, but that is an option as well. And then there's also the thing to discuss in terms of our left back situation. Now, Akanji obviously isn't going to play left back for us, but if you are to play Nathan Ake as a left back, like we saw at points last season, then you've got Nathan Ake at left back um, and Sergio Gomez at left back with Cancelo and Carl Walker as right back with Cancelo obviously and Carl Walker, if both fit, both starting either side. So then you've got a, a second option as a, as a, as a more of a, a solid left back with Nathan Ake and with that you've then got an extra centre back who can replace Nathan Ake in the middle so Akanji, Diaz, Stones, Laporte as centre backs and Nathan Ake then can be considered more of a left back if we need it and again this isn't right now but throughout the course of the season FA Cup semi-finals, League Cup finals, Champions
Champions League quarterfinals. When we get to that point, especially with a long World Cup, that's going to be hard on a lot of footballers. Um, I think Akanji makes a lot of sense for that reason. Uh, talking of centre-backs, I'm not sure made a lot of sense um, uh, this week on the Bet Victor YouTube channel. I talked about um, which centre-backs in the Premier League are world-class. Check out the clip down below. Because he's little, right, and yeah. going up against someone like Chris Wood, He's not the right. He's not going to be reliable in that instance, is he? If they're playing, no, he's definitely. Long... He got he got completely bullied by Brentford. Don't forget, United lost four 0 to Brentford a couple of weeks ago. I know it's all sun, he, sunshine and it roses. It wasn't his fault, though. It wasn't. His it was, fault, I know it wasn't his fault, but you can't you can't suddenly say he's a decent defender. He's come from a, a bang average league. He's already started whoa, whoa, his Man United career in very up and down form. He's not a bad player by any chance. Are you forgetting he pocketed but, your boy in the Champions League? It's not what, just Eredivisie what, where he's done well. He's also done well in the gas. Champions League. And he's done, done well. Okay in the define, so done, far. define that. He's definitely Round not of trash. He's definitely not unreliable. I think he's complete trash. For 60 million quid, he's, he's one of the nah. smallest centre backs in Premier League history. Nah. He's so small. Trash. It's unbelievable. I'm, he's smaller I'm gonna, than no, the average yeah. person. He's not trash. I can't agree it's with like, if you. If you if you listen to what this clown's saying, this will be my last week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying he's. I'm not saying he's trash. Of course, he's not trash. But he, he is at this stage unreliable, given what. No, I've... he's not unreliable. Adam, Adam, Adam he was at the heart of a defence. and lost four 0 to Brentford. He got subbed off at it half wasn't time his as a centre back. That's not. It wasn't it has, his yeah, it's not his fault. You take. You have you to take accountable. Harry You're starting centre back. Yeah. You're starting. If you're a starting centre back, and centre you back and he's fine. <laughs> if you if you if you're a starting centre back and your side's four 0 down to Brentford and you get subbed off at half time, even if the goals weren't through your mistakes, you David De Gea, I get it. De Lowe maybe was at fault for whatever. Oh, he's still cool. he's still he's still unreliable. It's as simple as that. Is Martinez world class? Let me know. And obviously, make sure you watch the full video. Some very strange shouts in there from Adam and I, but uh, we couldn't always agree. So uh, there we are. Let's talk about um, what Cheeky said about um, uh, Akanji coming into the club. He said. Uh, we've been very impressed with his performances during his time at Dortmund, uh, where he has developed into a very good defender and one who is ready to perform in both the Premier League and the Champions League. And for me, that is absolutely paramount. Again, the reference to the Champions League is probably the big one there. I think we want a squad ready to compete for the Champions League in terms of rotation. Look at Real Madrid. I think I think Real Madrid's a good example. Obviously, they beat us. You know, there are points where they were struggling against City. They really were on their last legs. And they bring on someone like Nacho, who's a bit of a winner, a bit feisty, obviously a Madrid kind of a Madrid man through and through. He comes on and kind of defends ruggedly, defends with a bit of steel. And I think Akanji represents that kind of that kind of substitute that we can bring on, who, who's in that age category of 27, 28, 29 in the next couple of years, that can come on and change a tie and, and help secure victories in knockout competitions. I think City's bench at, at points last season, you know, Cole Palmer was on the bench and, and a couple of the lads, you know, Ez Brand and people like that. They're too young to come on and influence City right now in big crunch games. But someone like Akanji is 100% the kind of guy, you know, almost like how we played Fernandinho at centre back. I think that we're still reeling from that a little bit, especially against Real Madrid where he got turned inside out. I think if we're 1 0 up against Bayern Munich in the Champions League semi final this season, Akanji is the kind of guy that can come on and play, you know, he can play anywhere really across the back line and, and just and, and fill a hole. He's someone that's going to absolutely fill a hole. And then you look at the kind of signings that we've made this summer and it's a really interesting window for City. Um, a lot of money's been brought in from Sterling, from Gabby Jesus, uh, from Lavia to Southampton, of course. And with that money, we've gone out and signed two strikers. We saw both of them play yesterday, which is really, really interesting as a City fan. At points, we saw a 4-4-2 yesterday. Um, and then we've got a backup keeper uh, who I think has got a much high, higher ceiling than Stefan ever did, with all due respect. Um, and then Calvin Phillips in midfield. That supplements the midfield. We've now got two defensive midfielders that can compete at a very, very high level with Bernardo, Gundogan, De Bruyne, Foden can all play in midfield. I think there's a world we see Jack Grealish potentially playing midfield when he's fit. So we've got two players in every position in that regard. And then now in the centre-back position, we've got Akanji, Ruben Diaz, John Stones, Laporte. And as I said earlier, I see I see Nathan Ake, who's you know started pretty well for City before that injury against Newcastle. As a left-back with Sergio Gomez, Cancelo can play either side, and then you've got Carl Walker as our starting right back. So that now makes our squad very, very strong with, again with those two keepers, two strikers, Mares on the wing. Uh, you can put Cole Palmer now, who's featuring more and more on the wing as well. We now have two fantastic players in every single position, and Akanji 
makes a lot of sense for that reason. So make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Tons of Man City content coming out. Let me know what, what you think about Kanji. Will he be a success at Man City? Hopefully, he fills a gap in those big Champions League games where maybe maybe we have injuries, maybe we're you know some players are maybe out of form. A Kanji just offers a, enough rotation, enough freshness in our back line that hopefully we can go a little bit further in the Champions League this season. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I'll see you soon.